Well, many have tried, but how many have succeeded? To talk about that, I'm joined by Donald Williamson, eminent professor of taxation and the Howard Dworkin faculty, faculty fellow at American University's Kogut School of Business. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, Donald, we hear about these so-called sin taxes and how they're a way to try and curb some of these unhealthy lifestyles. But what impact do they actually have when it comes to consumption? Well, I think as your spot showed, it, it, it's, the, it's still out as to whether consumption is being appreciably reduced. Um, I think in Mexico there has been a reduction of, in use of uh, soda, but unfortunately, as you pointed out, is on, it is on the poorer sectors of society, making it a regressive tax, which in my opinion is the worst kind of taxation policy you could possibly have. So with, it, with that being said then, who really loses with these sin taxes? Obviously, there's some people who have an addiction, whether it's to, to sugar, tobacco, Who's really losing out here? Well, obviously, anyone who buys the product is paying the extra tax. And if it's not curbing obesity in Mexico um, or in the Philippines, it might be encouraging extra me medical care. Uh, I think the key on those things is earmarking these taxes for these uses that the taxes are intended to uh, 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 make, make possible. Now, when these initiatives come about, you have people coming out, they want to put a syntax on, say, tobacco, alcohol, whatever the, the case may be. How do these companies react or perhaps even adapt their strategies when these initiatives come out? Well, it is interesting, as you pointed out, that actually consumption of soda has increased in some cases. Uh, I don't think it, it shows the inelasticity of the uh, business uh, that people are willing to pay the extra amount to continue to consume sugar in this case. So in some cases, there's this Robin Hood mentality. You're kind of <laughs> taxing these unhealthy things and perhaps trying to put it to some good uses, as we saw with the Philippines, who are using theirs now for universal medical care for the yeah. poor. What are some of the positive uses? Well, the, re these the revenue is the key. Historically, excise taxes like these have been used to raise revenue to make the government run. In fact, in the United States, it was the, uh, it was the major source of government revenue until the passage of the income tax. Indeed, our excise taxes on tea and sugar that the British tried to impose upon us created our American Revolution. So historically, uh, these taxes have been simply used as a device to raise revenue. It's only in the last few years, it's always also been used as a tool to influence behavior. And as you see, maybe it is and maybe it isn't. So with that being said, the, the skeptic in me is going to ask, how much of this is really about improving the life of, lives of citizens versus trying to get more taxes out of people? Well, that's the double-edged sword. It is easy for a government to enact additional taxes on sins, alcohol, tobacco, gambling, etc. That's an easy thing to say, and the public will accept that. Even, those, even the people who consume these products will accept it, because they themselves know it may not be in their best interest to buy it, but they like it. So uh, I, I, think, I think it serves a, more of a purpose to raise revenue than really to influence behavior. Now, let's look at this uphill battle. We saw that Michael Bloomberg obviously tried to, to cut these huge, supersized sodas yeah. full of sugar, and he failed. He came up against, you know, a lot of pushback. So when it comes to standing up to some of these big corporations in these sin industries, what are some of the biggest challenges there? Well, the biggest challenge, of course, is getting the tax passed. But as I mentioned, even the companies themselves may not oppose the additional taxes. Obviously, they're not going to be thrilled about it. But they're not going to you know, uh, lay down their lives to stop the passage of these taxes because the data shows the products are still consumed. Uh, the government like this because uh, they do get the extra revenue. And uh, take uh, in our country, for example, in Colorado, they legalized marijuana for no other reason than to raise the tax. One might consider marijuana to be a sin but it raises revenue for the state of Colorado, and that was the key. So with that being said, if, if the goal is perhaps unclear as to whether sin taxes really work or how they work with consumption, what are some better or more effective ways then of curbing some of these unhealthy lifestyles? Well, that goes beyond tax policy. There's no question about that. And uh, I would have to ask the psychologists uh, how they would ask people to change their lifestyles. I think what happened, for example, with t tobacco consumption in this country is uh, someone who smoked cigarettes became a pariah. And it, the society itself made the decision to find tobacco to be a bad product for people. And that's really, in my opinion, how consumption was reduced in tobacco. Not so much because of the excise taxes, but because of just societal pressure. And as I talked about some of these, um, these sin taxes, are there any final examples of countries that have really made it work and perhaps some that have put all this money in and it just hasn't worked? Well, as your spot showed, in the Philippines, it really has increased uh, the opportunity for medical care for the poor. 
Uh, for Medi Mexico, I think the, uh, the, the jury is still out as to whether it's curbing obesity. But I think it more generally shows that you cannot use taxes to influence every possible behavior that one would like to conduct in their lives. Taxes primarily are a form of raising revenue for government. Right. And I think we need to bear that in mind as we attempt to influence people's behaviors. Certainly something to keep in mind. Thank you again, Professor Donald Williamson from American University.